Uh, I don't remember. Wait, hold on. Sorry? No, I haven't. Do you want to summarise his work for me? I'm guessing you have. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to put it in a comprehensive way. Okay, give your best a, shot. Well, no, I think it's best that I just like, share the video. Yeah, I, I fair enough. Wanna, I wouldn't want to like uh, mischaracterise what you said. I also sure. don't feel like I'm like uh, in a position to do it. But yeah. I'll share it with you. That's but absolutely I fine. I just say that I super respect your work, by the way. What's your I'm name, bro? I'm from a Muslim, but I do respect your work a lot. Amen. Thank you very much, Amir. I just think it, it's a healthy debate. Yeah. I'm not siding with anyone. I think God gave us reason to listen to arguments and then we judge for ourselves. But it's nice to hear two sides of the argument. And, and, and I, 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 totally, I totally think that that is what Speaker's Corner is meant to be about. I want to be recorded by it. So, so right. put the cameras on me, guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And blur out that little bit yeah. when you had him. Okay. So, so. I'm just getting Bob, yeah? So I, I, would say, I, would, I would say to you. I would say to you. Bro, he, bro, he says he doesn't oh, want to so be on camera. Like, I can't make him. I can't make. So I can pick up his yeah, voice. I can't do anything about that. So, my, my my point to you is that I agree with you. People should use their reason, and I would suggest to you two things. Firstly, if Jesus Christ was really crucified, absolutely Islam is false. Secondly, there are there are eleven non-disputable facts that happened in the first century the historians agree about these if the Quran was true the Quran and Muslims don't have an answer for all of those facts they have an answer for three they don't have an answer for others but the fact that those historical events are true presents a problem for Islam because because they are true it means that if the Quran was true, they should not have happened. But they did happen, which strongly suggests that the Quran is false. Right? And so these, these, these facts are these. Christ was crucified. Christ was buried. The apostles were in despair about the fact that their Lord was crucified. The tomb a few days later was found empty. The first Christians taught that they experienced a, a literally risen Jesus Christ. They made that the central part of their message. Because they made that the central part of their message, the Christian movement was born, that they started to venerate Sunday as opposed to Saturday as a holy day of veneration, that James who doubted that Jesus was the Messiah became a Christian, that Paul who persecuted the church became a Christian and that they, um, and I can't remember the 12th or the 11th, but there you've got a whole bunch of facts that if the Islamic story was true, cannot be accounted for. There's no explanation as to why these things happened, but they did happen. And because they happened, it actually presents a proof that the Islamic story is false. Now you need to use your reason and investigate that claim. I will go away. I will. I look, I look at this diligently, but uh, I'm not in a place to debate. That is absolutely fine. Let me give you a gift. I always like sincere people. But uh, if the gift could be with a, an email to share this content with you. Yeah, I'll give you my email as well. That's absolutely. Uh, 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 you, you come across opening up as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, look at things. To Amir, have you got a Bible? No, I actually do have a Bible. Yeah, you have a Bible. Let, let me give you something else then. If you've already got a Bible, there's no point me giving you a Bible. Okay, bro. Let me let me give you a, a little gift. Sorry, bear with us one second. There you go. You can read that over a cup of coffee. It'll take you minutes. Great. Bob, can I ask a question? Yeah. I'll be here next Sunday anyway. All right, so let's talk next Sunday. Though. Yeah, absolutely. More than welcome. Let's yes. Yes, of course. You know, God bless. You, you, you mentioned like uh, eleven facts. Yeah, twelve. Twelve facts. Yeah. One of them, well, for example, you would, be, would be like uh, you said was it was buried, for example. Yeah, it was buried. You said it's indisputable. Can you like walk through the evidence of? Okay. 
So, 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 I don't, I don't know, bro. I don't think so, I don't think so. So in answer to your question, why is it an indisputable the fact that Christ was crucified? Uh, sorry, Christ was buried, right? I'm going to give you, so here, here's the reasons. If you look at Roman law about how to treat those who are punished, or if you look at the writings of Josephus Flavius that talks very explicitly about what happened to crucified souls, and then you uh, cross-reference that with Matthew, Mark, Luke, John and Paul, they all, the, the two sources, like the, the Dagesta, um, the, the, uh, the Roman law, and the writings of Josephus show that, that, the, the, that burying was normative even for condemned criminals. So it just fits the background. Yeah, it gives, a, it gives a background paradigm into which Matthew, Mark, Luke and John all state Christ was buried. And they're all independent. And they're independent and they're early. So it's all first century documentation, it's all first century evidence, and um, except for the Roman law, which is second century, but it's talking about what happened before. And the fact is, if you've got independent early evidence all stating something about history, historians have no reason to doubt it. Okay. So what we have like four, four Gospels. And Paul's writings. And Paul's writings. Yeah. And they're all independent, they're not, they're not relying on each other. They're saying Jesus buried, and in addition to that, it just fits the context of that's how Romans used to do things. Yeah. So, so that's what makes it independent. That's what makes it strong. Yeah. So, so the context yeah. is the writings of Josephus Flavius, okay. Flavius, the writings of Roman law about how to deal with criminals, but also you've got a third piece of evidence, which in 1968 they found an ossuary. An ossuary is a burial box. Okay. And it was a burial box, and on the ossuary it says, this is, these are the remains of Johannan, who was crucified by Pontius Pilate. And inside the box you find an ankle bone, and on the ankle bone you can still see the nail of crucifixion. So what you've got is two non-Christian documents and a historical archaeological uh, evidence that all demonstrate that the crucified were buried. And then in addition to that, you have five sources, independent, that state that Christ was crucified and that he was buried. So that's why it's no one disputes that Christ was buried. So for example, if Christ is buried, it's because you have five sources, Paul, the Gospels, and you have uh, Josephus, and uh, let's talk about that's how it normally used to happen. Yes. Right. And Roman law, and an, osu and an ossuary box, which is also background evidence. And then you also said the tomb was found empty. Yes, so the tomb and was found empty. Also an indisputable fact yes, the, the, like, so for instance, Bart Ehrman, for instance, he tries to dispute the fact that there was an empty tomb, okay. right? Historians, actual historians like Dr. Mike Lacona, basically say that Dr. Bart Ehrman doesn't know how to do history. Right? The reality is that even Dr. Bart Ehrman agrees that in the first century, the first followers of Jesus believed that they had seen the risen Jesus Christ. And the, the question, the question that, that, that anyone who doubts this has to answer is why did they become convinced? No, they believed because they saw an empty tomb and because they had seen the risen Jesus. So the empty tomb is based on what? That, that Their experience. So it's based on what they said. Is it in the, is it in the New Testament? Yeah, it's in the New Testament. Okay. But the thing that you've got to understand is that these beliefs about the, the resurrection of Jesus predate the New Testament. Okay. People don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus because of the New Testament. They write the New Testament because they believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Okay, no, I'm just, I, I understand what you're trying to say. I'm just trying to understand what you said, what they're indisputable. Just, yeah. So they're indisputable historically. Yeah. Because... Because if you're going to dispute something historically, yeah. what you need to do is come up with a hypothesis that explains the facts. And then you've got to present evidence for your hypothesis. What are the facts that tell us that the tomb was empty? Right. So the facts that the tomb was empty is this. 
paradigmatically, yeah. in first century Judaism, okay. second temple Judaism, when a prophet or someone who was a great teacher died, yeah. right, the custom was to venerate the tomb. Okay. Christ himself accuses the Pharisees and the Sadducees and he says that the death of every prophet from Abel to John the Baptist will be poured upon this generation because you venerate the tombs of the prophets who you acknowledge that your forefathers killed. And, and Jewish writings outside of the New Testament also testify to the fact that Jews would venerate the tomb of a great teacher. So if Jesus Christ died and his followers believed that he was a great teacher, but he didn't rise from the dead, in that cultural milieu, what would be the most natural thing for them to do? They just venerate the grave. Right? They just venerate the grave. Yeah. But they don't. Okay. Now what they go on to do is to proclaim that Christ had risen from the dead. That's your first evidence. Okay. Your second evidence is that the claims about Jesus' resurrection was not the only claim that was made in the first century. Okay. There was an alternative argument that was made from the first century that the apostles stole the body. And that continued even into the third century. Christians referenced the fact that Jews are still saying that, that Christ's body was stolen. But what is that an admission of? If you're saying that someone stole the body, you're saying that it was in a tomb and that the tomb was empty. So that's your second evidence, okay? So this is the reason why we have good, solid reasons to believe that that tomb was empty. The tomb was empty because it goes against what was normally the case. Yes, and it was also empty because we know from Flavius and from Roman law that it was normative to bury those that had died. And we also know that the Gospels and the writings of Paul all testify to the burial. I just wanted to know that, that Yeah, that's fine. What was the, what was the other one? So, so that was one example. Yeah. Another example is that Christ, that the early Christians, the Jewish Christians, venerated Sunday as a holy day. Okay. Now, you don't sound like an ignorant man. What is the holy day for the Jews? Saturday, the Sabbath. So why would you start venerating the first day of the week as a special day? Good question. Well, Christians have an answer to that question. It's because they believe in the resurrection.